the CEO, U Sarai's group, Mrs. Toyosi Akirele Ogun Shiji, is here with us in the studio to discuss this year's theme, civic youth civic engagement. Thanks a lot for your time with us. Thank you very much for having me over. Yes, now how would you assess the level of youth involvement in decision making? Um, so the theme, for, so the United Nations theme for this mm -hmm. year would be our youth and civic engagement and the significant role of young people okay. in politics and public life. Mm -hmm. um, and we've just come out of a very historic, um, almost incredible, you know, election. Oh. Um, the world can almost tell mm. that this is, this has been um, since the independence of Nigeria in 1960, mm. this has been the election of the young people. For the very first time, you had young people through volunteerism, through social media, through mass mobilization of their own resources and young people like them as well, we've been able to install a new government. Um, and I would say that more than ever, um, Nigerian young people, are, you know, are co you know we've, we've come into maturity and 2019 will probably be determined to a very large extent mm -hmm. by what young people think. Now, when you talk about decision making contextually, um, it may not be decision making in terms of the positions of authority okay. and leadership that young people currently, you know, um, feel. Yeah. But in terms of how young people are influencing policy mm -hmm. at various levels of government, I think that young people you know, in Nigeria coming full circle. Okay, let's uh, narrow it down exactly to um, Africa and maybe even Nigeria. Let's look at the negative vices perpetrated by youths uh, these days, uh, the latest being terrorism, of course, the uh, crimes and other crimes like robbery and all of that. Two yeah. Nigerians were nabbed in India for trying to uh, join uh, ISIS recently. Would you say with all of these, youths are ready for what they are calling for, more, to be more included <laughs> in decision-making in governments? Well, um, yes. And for every two Nigerians that are nabbed in India, there are 10 other Nigerians putting Nigeria on the map mm. in Africa and the world. Mm. Uh, Nigeria for, um, um, so if you pick all the six continents of the world, you'd find that um, all the other continents are growing older, mm. Africa is growing younger. And at the end of the day, innovation is, you know, Nigeria and Africa is currently the, the hub for innovation like in the world. Nigeria's economy is growing at a sporadic breakneck speed in which, uh, and, and at the forefront of that growth, and at the, at, the, at the heart of that growth, you have young people innovating on a consistent basis on open government issues, job creation. We're beginning to use you know, very um, unconventional means to find and prefer solutions to our own problems. So you know that unemployment and education are probably the most you know, crucial challenges of young people mm. in Nigeria today. And when you talk about, I, I always say that, I mean, I keep quoting someone like Professor Femi Oshofiso, who said that in a mind, in a situation where the same mind clamors for bread and books, bread will always win. Mm. And so in the face of quality and choice, a lot of times Nigerian young people do not really have, you know, much choice. But in the face of those very, you know, terrible choices that present themselves before us, okay. I would say that, you know, I'm excited to be part of this turning point generation. Um, for the most part, I, I know that there's a lot of crime and terrorism going on. But I would also like us to be aware that there are two categories of young people. There's the level of the educated, dynamic, upwardly mobile, progressive, privileged young person who has access to education, information, and mm. probably a job. Okay, let me quickly take you on the issue of what you talked about, quality and choices. That's There's right. been the issue of um, a rise in the rates of, of migration now, youth especially trying to uh, get into Europe, mm -hmm. seeking greener pastures. Should the focus be on uh, making, discouraging these youths from trying to cross over to Europe, or making the area, making Africa conducive enough for them to prosper? Um, so one of the things that Africa must do, specifically because Nigeria, you know, happens to be like a rallying point for Africa at the moment, um, would be that we've got to be able to tackle our job creation challenges. Um, at the end of the day, when people are unemployed, they can never make the right choices. When people don't have jobs, and I'll give you an example. So, for example, we have you, you, you are building countries like China, mm. Japan, Singapore, Asia, for example, are not investing anymore, are not investing as much in their formal education system as they're investing in their vocational education mm -hmm. system. Now, I'm worried that consistently we're placing priority on certification rather than skill. And I've learned that we have a problem in Nigeria. Being that we produce everything we do not consume, and we consume everything we do not produce. 
Now, other countries of the world are producing, and the economies of the world that are leading are the economies that are productive economies. Now, if you compare Nigeria and China, there are very clear similarities. Population of young people, land mass. What are we doing with the potential of our own young people? The entire private sector of Nigeria, telecoms, oil and gas, uh, fast-moving consumer goods, don't employ up to 5 million young people in a country where you have, say, over 30% unemployment. So what do you think will be responsible for the youth being sidelined? I, I don't think that young people are being sidelined. I think that specifically young people are not em adequately empowered. And for the few people who have enjoyed some level of access and empowerment, they are making things happen for our generation. So I don't think that, I think it's just for the government to be able to provide an enabling environment mm -hmm. and ensure that we emphasize the importance of skill. Because it's an irony that Nigerian, you know, uh, for example, our vocational skills were important skills from Togo, Ghana, Cameroon, and, um, um, and Cotonou. And we have huge unemployment rates in Nigeria. Why aren't we training our young people? Why, when are we going to elevate vocational education to the level of formal education, where a plumber is a professional as a plumber, as much as a doctor is a professional as a doctor? Mm. Because at the end of the day, the people who are able to think, think are, are, are usually superior to the people who are able to toil. So it's, it's, about work, it's about working smart now, not necessarily working very hard. Okay, there's a saying that evil prevail when good men do nothing about it. What can youths themselves begin to do mm. to help themselves? We already started. And we already started with the level of involvement in the 2015 elections. In a country where people do not have the capacity, competence, and character to demand mandatory accountability from leadership at all levels of government. In a country where you leaders, political leaders, believe that their responsibility to us as a generation is to give us handouts and to give us money. It, would, it is not a sustainable you know, type of empowerment. Now, we already started with the 2015 elections, and going forward, what young people must do is to ensure that we do not allow the new government to compromise and go the way of older governments. We've got to be able to ensure that we demand what is ours. We don't want money now. We don't want bags of rice. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to be able, we don't want you to give us jobs of, we want you to create an enabling environment, right. ensure that power functions, okay. ensure that they have access to SME loans, right. and you can see the possibilities that young people, okay. young people uh, can uh, make in Let us thank you, uh, Mrs. Toyosi Akirele Ogunshiji, for your thoughts and contributions. Thank you very on much. On TVC News Hour. Thank you very much. You're watching TVC News Hour. More stories after.